The purpose of this lab is to prepare tris one tan phenethylene iron 2 chloride with the highest yield. Throughout this experiment, we refer to one tan phenethylene as phen and tris one tan phenethylene iron 2 chloride as red crystals. We will begin to prepare the red crystals via synthesis. Synthesis is a stage in which we will take and combine two reactants, ferrous ammonium sulfate and phen, to form a more complex product, the red crystals. With the formation of tris one tan phenethylene, we will move we will go into the workup where we will try to isolate and purify the red crystals. Before the experiment begins, we will need to wear the appropriate attire for this lab. Safety goggles and apron and shoes should be worn when entering the lab. It is recommended that you get 15 milliliters of methanol, 10 milliliters of 1 molar HCl, and 10 milliliters of acetone from the fume hood before to save you a few trips. You should also pre-weigh 0.86 grams of ferrous ammonium sulfate, 1 gram of phen, 2.5 grams of NaCl, and 2-3 to three boiling chips. All waste from this experiment will be disposed of into the heavy metal waste container in the fume hood, and the disposable pipettes will be thrown away into the broken glass bin. You must be patient throughout this experiment. If you attempt to rush through the experiment, you have a lower percent yield than to those who have to take their time. We will first begin by taking and weighing out 0.86 grams of ferrous ammonium sulfate and 1 gram of phen. It is essential that you take the initial weight of both ferrous ammonium sulfate and phen because they will be used when calculating the theoretical yield. Next, we will take the 0.86 grams of ferrous ammonium sulfate and transfer this to the 50 milliliter beaker. 10 milliliter of 1 molar HCl is added to dissolve the crystals. You may stir the solution to dissolve it quicker. Next, we will add 1 gram of phen to the 150 milliliter beaker. 10 milliliter of methanol will be added to dissolve the phen. Using a stirring rod, stir the solution until phen is completely dissolved. The iron 2 ammonium sulfate solution will be added to the phen solution that was just prepared. Gradually, you will notice a deep red in solution. This reaction produces the red crystal solution complex. We will now move on to the workup. Before beginning the workup, you should preheat the hot plate, get 2.5 grams of sodium chloride, and set up the gravity filtration with the filter like so. Take the 2.5 grams of sodium chloride and saturate it in 10 milliliters of water in a 50 milliliter beaker. Stir the solution until all the crystals have dissolved. Add the solution to your iron fen solution. Once you have prepared the solution, pour it through the filter. The purpose of adding sodium chloride to the iron fen solution is to remove as much insoluble impurities as possible when filtering it into a 150 milliliter beaker. If there is still some residue left in the 50 milliliter beaker, use a wash bottle to spray some DI water to rinse it and pour it into the filter. Be aware that the more DI water that you use, the longer you must wait when you boil the solution. You should also rinse the filter paper with DI water to get as much of the solution as possible. We will now add the pre-weighted boiling chips and drop them into the filtrated solution. If you forget to weigh the boiling chips, you will have to remove them at the end of the experiment and weigh the boiling chips separately. Place the beaker on top of the hot plate with the watch glass on top. Remember, you should not turn the hot plate all the way up. About 3 to 4 is sufficient. If you turn the heat too high, it may ruin your results due to the crystals spurting. As you wait for the solution to boil down to one third of its initial volume, your partner should go fill a beaker with 5 milliliter of water and do the same with 10 ml of acetone and 5 ml of methanol. Place each of the beakers into the ice bath. By now, the beaker on the hot plate should be about done. If while waiting you notice the volume getting too low or if it has already begun to spurt, remove the beaker off the hot plate using a tong and transfer the beaker to the table. 
You will let it cool down for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, transfer the beaker to an ice bath and let it stay in the ice bath for 15 minutes. As the beaker is sitting in the ice bath, you will begin to see the crystals precipitating. This slow cooling will help the crystals form properly. Do not remove the beaker from the ice bath before 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, you remove the beaker from the ice bath. With the vacuum filtration set up, wet the filter paper with a small amount of methanol. Turn the vacuum on and pour the solution into the Bachner funnel. If some residue is still left in the beaker, you may use a rubber policeman to extract as much as you can. Wash the crystals with a small amount of methanol using disposable pipettes. The methanol will remove impurities as well as water. This is the most important part of the experiment and great attention should be taken. Be careful as too much methanol will dissolve the crystals and give you a lower percent yield. After dousing the crystals with methanol, wash it at least twice with acetone. Let the vacuum run, pulling the air through the sample for an additional 5 minutes. After 5 minutes, remove the filter paper from the funnel using the double-sided spatula. If there are some crystals on the outer edges, you can use the spatula to scrape as much of the crystals out onto the filter paper. Let the crystals dry in the oven for at least 20 minutes before removing the watch glass. It is better to keep the crystals in the oven for a bit more so that more water will be evaporated from the crystals. Once the crystals are completely dried, transfer the crystals to a weighing paper and weigh the crystals. Record the weight and transfer the crystals to a vial for later use. When calculating the mass of the actual yield, do not forget to subtract the mass of the boiling chips from the final mass to solve the mass of the actual yield. Collect the excess solution in this experiment and pour this into a beaker. Record the volume. Then pour the solution into a heavy metal waste container. Dispose of the disposable pipettes into the broken glass bin. Your results are entirely based upon how careful you are throughout the experiment. So if you were meticulous in your procedure, you have a higher percent yield compared to those who rushed through this experiment.